Hi all. Uh, yeah, welcome to the today's webinar. So uh, we will going to discuss uh, API management in service mesh uh, using Istio and WC2 API Manager. Uh, today uh, I am a Lakmal. Uh, I am a senior director, cloud architect, mainly working in uh, containerization technologies and uh, cloud strategies in WSO2. And also with me, Pubudu Gunatilik is also joining. He's a uh, key member in API management team and uh, mainly working in uh, containerization and STO integration with WC2 API manager. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's look at briefly uh, what we are going to discuss today. Uh, so uh, from the start, we will discuss how the applications are evolved and then uh, we'll discuss uh, why is microservice architecture is important? What are the benefits? Uh, then we will uh, discuss uh, what are the challenges coming with the microservice architecture. And then we'll see how service mesh is going to be uh, solve some of these challenges. And then uh, we'll do some uh, couple of demos. Uh, so first one is we will do, do demo based on the how you can use STO for different uh, uh, address the different microservice challenges. Then uh, we'll briefly look at uh, why API management is important uh, in the service mesh uh, uh, platform. And then we'll discuss how WSO2 API manager uh, integrate with STO. And later we'll do another couple of demos, how you can do API management uh, in top of STO service mesh. Yeah, let's go forward. So uh, if you look at the last five decades the application architecture has evolved so uh, these applications are like increasingly disaggregated and build disaggregated architectures and these architectures gives flexibility to scale to meet the trending uh, customer demands so massively disaggregated uh, approaches like uh, microservices serverless and apis are becoming the norm for us all Let's briefly look at the benefits of microservice architecture compared to a monolithic application. Microservice architecture is an approach to uh, developing a single application as a suite of uh, small uh, services. Each microservice is running on its own process and loosely coupled with other services by communicating over the network. Because of that, each microservice can easily scale up. These services are built around business capabilities. A smaller team can be on one or few business functionalities and they can independently implement uh, these services by using their favorable programming language uh, suitable for their requirement. This allows to innovate fast and expose to early feedback cycles and also speed to go to market. Uh, breaking up monolith, monoliths into a microservice add more components. When number of components are, or the microservices uh, are smaller, it is easy to manage. But when things are scaling, it will be more complex. The harder problem of microservice is calling or communicating with other services. Let's look at few challenges of the microservice architecture. Uh, number one, resilience communication. The microservice to microservice communication is doing over the network. We can't guarantee 100% network reliability even if it is running in a local network. Service to service communication can be timed out or it can be failed or accumulated latency will cause to time out in different levels. To overcome these network related problems, Service developer has to apply resilience techniques like retry, failover, or circuit breaking in their code base. And this will become an additional overhead for service developers. Since different teams are using different programming languages, they have to use multiple libraries and each library will be have its own implementation. On the other hand, this will be creating a, a governance uh, overhead in organization. Let's look at the service discovery. Microservices are deployed by different teams. 
they can roll out new version or do upgrades. This will be ended up with different IP address because of immutability nature of modern containerized deployment. Because of that, we can't hard code dependent service address in your code. There should be a mechanism to dynamically discover and route the message among these services. Let's look at the security. Microservices are communicating over the network. Because of the network cause, we need to do the secure communication. Implementing security protocol in each and every microservices will be all head to service this uh, developer. Implementation can be different to language to language and libraries to libraries. Again, this will be a, another, introduce another overhead to the addi uh, additional overhead to the governance uh, in organization. Let's briefly look at the observability. Observability is key to identify what's going on when things are failing. In Monolith, Monolith we have uh, we can have central location of capturing, logging, tracing, and metrics. But microservice deployment is different. Collecting all these stats in microservice level is important, but we need to have aggregated all these stats to have some kind of meaningful uh, result. Now let's look at how you can do uh, new releases, how you can deploy new releases. The one key benefit of microservice architecture is to roll out frequent releases to the production. Now uh, challenge is how we can do smooth rollouts, how we can roll back if something went wrong. Blue green, canary, or A-B testing, or traffic shadowing are few deployment strategies uh, to overcome this, but thing is, Implementing these are not an easy task. Okay, uh, uh, Microsoft gives uh, give us many advantages, but these advantages comes with set of challenges. Now let's see how we can overcome these challenges. A service mesh is a platform that controls server to server communication over the network. All microservice challenges that we discuss about are key requirement to handle in service mesh platform. It is designed to handle and control all these communication in a lower layers in the stack, rather handle it in the application layer, layer seven. Sidecar will be playing a major role here. Let's look at Sidecar. So when uh, uh, deploy a service into service mesh, it, it will be attached to a service proxy as a sidecar. The message intercept uh, is handled by using IP table rules and actual service does not want to know about sidecar existence. Because of that, service developer can carry out their development independently from the deployment. Yeah, by using this technique, uh, we can create a well-controlled service mesh which carried out all the service-to-service -service communication without interrupting normal service development. Okay, so Istia is an open source service mesh implementation and it is uh, backed by major companies like Google, IBM, and Lyft. So let's look at, briefly look at the Istio architecture. Uh, STO data pane is a uh, composed of set of intelligent proxies. Uh, uh, they are using Onoi uh, as a, a sidecar proxy and deploy, uh, deployed as a sidecars. Uh, the control pane manage and the configure the proxies to route the traffic. Misha is the platform independent component. So Misha uh, enforces access control and usage policies across the service mesh and collects telemetry data from the Onnoi proxy and other services. Misha includes a very flexible plugin model, which can use to extend service mesh capabilities. Later in this session, you can see how WSO2 use this Misha plugin to extend uh, service mesh capabilities. 
Yeah, the pilot tried uh, service discovery for uh, uh, on noise sidecast and traffic management capabilities for like uh, intelligent routing such as A-B testing, canary, uh, or blue-green rollouts, and also provide resilient communication, uh, resilient con con configuration such as uh, timeout, straight ties, sensor get breaker, etc. Uh, Citadel enable strong server-to-server -server authentication uh, with built-in identity and uh, credential management. Gallery uh, is a store configuration, validation, and processing and distribution component. Okay. So let's briefly look at uh, Stio demo. Uh, so uh, Pubudi will demonstrate how Stio solve uh, one of the key microservice challenges we have discussed about. Pubudu, over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Lakma. So uh, let me share my screen. Um, okay. So um, okay, so I have come up with a user story. So uh, uh, this uh, user story about uh, an online uh, shopping store. So uh, I have three uh, microservices developed. So I have this uh, product microservice, which is uh, developed uh, using Ballerina. So uh, Ballerina is a cloud native programming language. So uh, it will be uh, easy to develop a microservice using Ballerina and uh, in this uh, product microservice um, you will get uh, product uh, information and I have other in-main microservice this runs on uh, Node.js and uh, this provides uh, inventory information uh, about uh, product and uh, finally I have a review microservice uh, which is also developed in Ballerina so uh, in this review microservice, uh, it will provide the product uh, uh, review score of the particular product. So if we go a little bit um, further um, in this um, use case, in the product uh, microservice, uh, I have two resources. One is product. It will, uh, when you use that, it will um, you will get all the product information and I have other uh, resource called product slash uh, product ID when you use that uh, it will get uh, particular product information so uh, in this case when you invoke in the second um, resource it will call the inventory microservice to get uh, inventory information of that particular product and uh, also it will call the review microservice to call get the review uh, score of that particular product so um, this is the basic um, scenario so we are going to deploy it in uh, istio so i have already created um, my samples so you can um, see the, the samples in uh, in my uh, github repo so um, uh, let me uh, share the uh, so I have already the code with me so uh, let me first uh, explain uh, what I'm going to deploy here so in this microservices sample I'm going to deploy inventory microservice so when deploying inventory service uh, I'm going to deploy a service in Kubernetes and also the deployment in uh, Kubernetes. So these are the Kubernetes resources. So, uh, then uh, I'm going to deploy the review microservice. It, uh, in this case also I have the service and the deploy. And uh, I'm going to deploy product uh, version 1.0.0. So in this case I have the service and the deployment. In addition to that I have uh, so uh, I have the gateway and virtual service. So uh, the endpoint so the from external. So we are exposing a product microservice to outside. Uh, so the you can use it. So that's the basic scenario. 
where uh, you expose your product microservice to outside then uh, that microservice only that microservice can be uh, involved so uh, in order to do that i'm going to deploy a gateway and uh, in gateway we allow all the traffic and uh, and also i'm going to deploy the virtual service where i say use this uh, particular gateway and whenever uh, traffic comes to this uh, virtual service uh, route those uh, traffic to product microservice and the weight is 100 so all the traffic comes to this uh, endpoint or the gateway it will come to the product uh, microservice so uh, i'm going to deploy this so i have a microservices sample repository so uh, i think um, so uh, i have already deployed uh, stio in gke and uh, my uh, stio cluster is uh, running so you can see um, stio all the ports that are running Okay, let's uh, deploy the inventory first. You can use cook serial create uh, minus f and inventory yaml to deploy. So in this case, uh, I'm deploying the service and the deployment. Then I'm going to deploy uh, uh, review uh, microservice. Okay. Now finally, I'm going to deploy the product microservice product version 100 and uh, it will deploy the service deployment and addition to that it will deploy the gateway and the virtual service where we store our product microservice to external to uh, uh, access now uh, we have already deployed uh, uh, our microservices so if you get uh, check for the port, uh, we have deployed those microservices. Uh, so the I have enabled uh, Stio injection to the default uh, namespace, and uh, due to that, you can see the number of uh, containers in this port. So if you take the inventory, this count is uh, two because uh, in addition to the inventory container you have the annoy um, container as well uh, okay now um, let's see how we can uh, access from uh, outside so uh, so now we need to identify the external ip address of my uh, ingress uh, gateway so you can use this command to get the external ip okay so this is my ip and um, i'm going to get um, the uh, ingress gateway port using this command okay 3138 is my ingress uh, port so uh, I'm going to use the postman so I have this um, IP address and uh, 31380 uh, node port and I have the products resource you can remember that uh, we had two resources so uh, if you use that you will get the product information so, uh, so we can successfully access so uh, i can use a product id in here 101 then uh, i will get the review score and the stock availability as well so uh, likewise uh, we can try out the some of the other uh, uh, products as well 501 floral uh, sleeveless gloves uh, 
likewise there are we can get the uh, product specific information so this is a basic uh, example and uh, let's look uh, how we can uh, do a canary deployment uh, so uh, let's say uh, i want to get uh, ad an additional information such as a category so, uh, apart from the name id price series scope i want to get the category uh, field uh, in my uh, this uh, microservice so uh, in that case i have developed another microservice called uh, uh, product uh, version 101 so uh, in there i can um, i have included category so um, now let's uh, deploy that uh, product uh, microservice version 101 so in that case i'm going to deploy the service and the deployment so let's uh, click, uh, quickly deploy it and product yaml so uh, so we we have only deployed this but uh, still there are, we we haven't done any changes so uh, only our request will be routed to the uh, first uh, the, the microservice we deployed at the beginning so uh, in that case uh, so we can't directly traffic routes from microservice one to two um, uh, in a successful right hundred uh, percent. So we have to do some um, uh, incremental uh, uh, traffic management in this case. So I'm going to update. So this is the uh, you can remember the virtual service we deployed in uh, when deploying the product uh, microservice at the beginning so i'm going to update that virtual service where the uh, any traffic comes to this uh, uh, virtual service uh, you will be routed 75 percent of traffic to product microservice then 25 percent to the products uh, version 101 so uh, so we are going to do this uh, weighting uh, like 75% and 25% so uh, not only uh, products uh, service will get all the traffic but it will get only 75% of the traffic so uh, let's uh, deploy this and see how we behave so I'm going to apply so I'm going to update the virtual service okay now um, i have already updated my virtual service and if you look this so uh, still you are getting the response from the product uh, microservice okay now you are getting the category so the category so that means our traffic routed to the uh, newly created microservice as well so the like file you will get uh, this traffic will keep uh, 75 percent and uh, 25 percent likewise the traffic will be routed so uh, likewise we can uh, do this uh, incremental traffic management and do a canary deployment successfully so uh, in some cases um, uh, if this uh, if you are not um, happy with the, this uh, deployment we can roll back to the canary deployment uh, where you can specify 100% uh, to the product microservice and uh, keep zero to the uh, newly created microservice so uh, in that case um, it will like uh, it will route the traffic as uh, we explained in the beginning 
So let's uh, quickly deploy this and see how it behaves. So uh, I'm going to update that as well. So now uh, we are no longer getting the category because uh, we roll out our uh, canary deployment. So uh, this is a basic uh, feature. I explain about traffic management, how traffic management can be done in a secure uh, use case. So there are several other features um, coming in Istio as well. So hopefully uh, you can explore and uh, figure it out. And um, it's uh, this is about demo. So uh, Lakma, over to you, uh, and we can probably uh, go with uh, API management. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Google. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, one uh, one of the major confusion in the current industry is like uh, people are thinking there is no need of API management uh, solution if you use a service mesh. Let's uh, uh, do a quick comparison between service mesh and API management. Uh, first, let's look at the routing. Uh, yeah, tra the traffic interception on service mesh uh, is happening in layer three and layer four. But in API management, it is inter intercept, uh, uh, intercepting and interesting HTTP, uh, gRPC, or GraphSQL kind of uh, protocols, and mainly intercepting in the layer seven. Uh, and uh, when it comes to security, uh, service mesh is provide uh, uh, service identity and server to server security via uh, M MLTS. And API management provide more user and the application level security mainly uh, user O2 and JWT. And also when you come to the, the analytics, uh, service mesh is focusing on service operation analytics like uh, errors, failures, latency in uh, the service level. But API management uh, analytics are more focusing on business level uh, or business insights. Uh, when you come to the when you come to the throttling or the rate limiting, the service mesh is focusing on like a service level, uh, RPC level, uh, remote process level uh, rate limiting. But when you come to the API management, it is focusing on APIs like uh, application level or APIs level rate limiting, and they are more close to business operation. Uh, and service mesh provide DevOps kind of portal. But the API management provide multiple portals uh, which interact with different personas like a publisher, developer, and business users. So there are significant differences between service mesh and the API management functionalities. <coughs> Basically, uh, they are providing two different solutions for two different problem domains. So if you want to have both solutions in one system, we can integrate service mesh to work with API management. Okay, now let's look at uh, uh, when is API management required in a service mesh environment? When uh, users need to expose microservices to outside in a secured and a controlled manner, we can use API management on top of service mesh. Again, uh, we can think about uh, like uh, uh, get fine-grained security for exposed APIs, we can use uh, API management. Next, uh, for collecting stat uh, on API usage for uh, monetization and billing, we can use API management. Uh, also, when we want to offer a marketplace for APIs and build API ecosystem around it, API management platform is important. Uh, let's see how WSO2 API manager integrate with STO. Here, uh, uh, so you can see uh, I have uh, put all this uh, service, STO service mesh component in this uh, diagram. Uh, so service mesh mainly provides service, service management by using data plane and control plane. So DevOps will be a main persona who is interacting with your service mesh. Let's see uh, how uh, WSO2 API manager fit it into this picture. Uh, you can see there are a couple of components uh, uh, 
uh, fitting into this picture. Uh, so WS2 API manager will provide API management capabilities by adding management plane into service mesh. So API management layer provide business related functionalities uh, uh, by extending interaction between uh, with different personas like API developer, API publisher, business user, and application developer. So like I explained previously, Istio Miksha has a pluggable architecture. Uh, WSO2 API manager, uh, Misha adapter will bridge between control pane and the management pane communication. Uh, WSO2 API publisher and natively understand Istio control pane. Uh, so when, when you creating an API at publisher portal, it will automatically propagate to Istio control pane and do the policy enforcement uh, in the data pane. Uh, business uh, related metrics and the stats are captured and then provide business related analytics via the API analytics portal. Uh, so developer portal uh, will provide the API catalog by uh, uh, logically grouping microservices deployed in service mesh and able to do uh, monetization. Uh, so uh, WSO API key manager and the traffic manager will be sitting on the control pane and uh, API publisher, the deliver portal and analytics portal will be sitting in the penetration pane and provide different uh, dashboard to the uh, different personas. So let's uh, uh, look at uh, how you can set up and use WC API manager with the STL service mesh. Fubudu, uh, you can uh, take the uh, control now. Okay, uh, thank you, Lakma. Okay, uh, so um, we recently uh, released uh, Istio uh, for API management for Istio, and uh, we have recently released a uh, version 1.0. So uh, in the GitHub uh, repository, you can find those uh, details. So uh, in this um, mixer, uh, uh, we have uh, for the Istio uh, capabilities, we have a uh, written a mixer adapter for API manager. So I'm going to follow this guide. So in this site, uh, we are going to do uh, three things. Uh, we are going to deploy WSO2 uh, API manager analytics 260 and install WSO2 API manager 260. And finally, we are going to install uh, WSO2 Istio mixer adapter. So uh, let's uh, start with um, API manage analytics. So uh, I can use uh, this uh, to uh, deploy analytics. So, uh, so I have those uh, two API artifacts uh, with me. Okay, so uh, in this, uh, when uh, deploying, uh, we have created a namespace called uh, WSO2. In there, we are going to deploy uh, analytics and also deploy a service for the analytics to access. Uh, now, uh, let's uh, deploy uh, API manager. In order to deploy API manager, um i need to um deploy config maps for api manager so config maps are uh, kubernetes resources uh, kubernetes artifacts uh, that uh, can uh, use to deploy configuration so i'm going to deploy those uh, config uh, config map first now i have already deployed now i'm going to deploy um, uh, API manager as well. So uh, if you check uh, kubectl get port uh, minus nws or two, you can see that uh, analytics is running. Now uh, let's uh, deploy uh, API manager. Okay, so uh, it will deploy um, service account and uh, cluster role and cluster role binding. And also a deployment and 
a service so uh, from api manager we are going to access uh, kubernetes uh, api service api uh, server uh, in uh, to deploy some of the rules uh, http api specs and some of the resources in uh, istio so we have a deployed um, we have deployed uh, api manager and um, api manager analytics so uh, you can see analytics is already started and uh, api manager is uh, getting started so um, before we access uh, api manager i'm going to quickly deploy uh, istio mixer adapter as well so uh, i'm going to deploy a uh, uh, secret which contains uh, the certificate of uh, api manager this is for uh, uh, if this is for the istio mixer adapter okay i have uh, deployed my uh, secret then uh, i'm going to deploy the uh, adapter artifact So in this, uh, when deploying, we are going to deploy several artifacts like uh, attribute manifest, uh, uh, several templates, authentication and matrix template, and uh, some of the handler configs that is required for the WS Auto handler. Okay, uh, so if we check uh, for the Uh, check for the API manager. My API manager analysis are running, those are in running state, and uh, my mixer adapter is also in uh, also running in Istio system namespace. So, uh, you can see WSO2 adapter over here. So, my adapter is also running. So, um, let's see um, how we can access the uh, api manager so when deploying api manager we have uh, used a uh, node port to uh, so uh, we have used the node port type in uh, api manager service so it means uh, like uh, you can use any kubernetes cluster node ip to access the api manager so uh, you can put an etc host entry with the uh, kubernetes node ip any node ip with ws2 api then uh, you can use uh, this uh, URL to access the uh, API manager. So I have already added my um, etc host entry. Now I'm going to uh, access the API manager. So this comes up the API publisher uh, login. So I'm going to use the uh, admin admin credential to log in to the publisher. Okay. Uh, we can uh, log into the publisher so uh, now we have already deployed what is uh, required for uh, api how we can apply api management in istio so um, from the deployment part is done now let's see what we really going to do here so um, as uh, you can see uh, previously my uh, product service is running so uh, I have this uh, product microservice which we deployed previously. So this is running. So I'm going to apply service manage apply API management for this uh, particular microservice. So in order to do that, I'm going to expose this microservice as an API. Then apply uh, once you deploy this as a API, it will automatically apply security. Uh, so in this case, we are going to apply security and we going to check the analytics for our API as well. So uh, let's uh, deploy, uh, create an API for the uh, product microservice. So I'm going to create uh, the new API. 
So I'm going to call this API as a product uh, API and I'm going to use the context as to. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, you can remember that in our microservice, it had uh, two resources called product and uh, I'm going to add the product um, resource and also I had uh, another resource called uh, uh, product and product ID. So I'm going to add that resource as well. So we have two resources here or the URL patterns here, product and product slash uh, product ID. So uh, we'll move to the next uh implement stage in here i'm going to give my production endpoint as a, so uh, it the endpoint should be the product microservice service name so you can remember the product microservice uh, service name is also product so i'm going to define my um, product uh, microservice as product uh, dot uh, call uh, product dot uh, default and uh, svc cluster local so in this case product is the microservice uh, service name in, in kubernetes default is the namespace so the svc cluster local uh, that's specifically qualified the uh, dns name that comes in so you can define the production endpoint or the microservice endpoint as uh, like in here okay now i'm going to go to the next stage so in here i'm going to apply the default uh, tiers in this case in addition to that i'm going to apply a scope here so first uh, i'm going to create the scope call scope uh, product id and uh, key also i'm going to do the same and i'm going to add role as admin so i'm going to add a scope here as a product scope product id so um, then i'm going to attach this particular scope to the second resource which is which, uh, you can get the product information so the here the thing is that when you get an access token you need to have the access token needs to contain that particular scope otherwise you cannot uh, invoke the second resource but in the first resource you don't need to have a, a, the scope in the access token you can just uh, invoke using the access token without uh, a scope in the access token so that's the difference. So we are going to apply find gain access control over this particular resource uh, as uh, so I can, can protect that uh, with scope as well. So I'm going to publish my uh, API. So uh, we can successfully uh, uh, publish my API. Once uh, it is published, uh, we are no longer able to access this particular microservice because uh, we have already applied uh, security enforcement by creating an api here so this uh, says uh, this is coming from wso to adapter handler where you need you are missing credentials so you need to have credential to access this uh, particular resource so if you try the other resource as well you get the same thing so now let's see how you can uh, apply, uh, how you can um, access this particular uh, microservice. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to go to the store where you can, uh, which is the developer portal, yeah. So I'm going to log in, in using the default credential. So um, you can see in the developer portal uh, the store 
uh, uh, where my API is here and uh, I'm going to access uh, my uh, API using JWT and then once it is done I'm going to access uh, my API or the microservice uh, using an auth uh, token so I'm going to create an application called uh, JWT app and I'm going to select the token type as uh, JWT so uh, now I'm going to uh, subscribe to my uh, uh, API so I'm going to select JWT application and I'm going to subscribe to the application um, so if you look at the app you can see the subscription and uh, let's uh, get an access token uh, by generating a token so in this case uh, I did not give any score I only use uh, just uh, generate a token so uh, let's see how uh, we can access uh, the product microservice. So I'm going to copy paste uh, my token over here and let's access it. So we are able to access it now. Uh, now the key thing here is that if we try to access the product uh, version 1, we cannot access that particular uh, resource because uh, in this token the jw token i did not uh, add a token add a score when uh, generating an access token now in order to access that particular resource i'm going to select uh, scope uh, scope id so scope product id and i'm going to regenerate another access uh, JWT token so I have copied my token now uh, if we go and um, and I'm going to copy uh, copy paste the new token I got from there so if we use that we should be able to access that particular resource so that's the use of uh, 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 scope validation here so the you can do a fine grain access control with the scope as well so um, now if we move on to the presentation uh, and uh, to discuss about the JWT so in the JWT validation process when the request comes in annoy check the policy check from the mixer so mixer check uh, what are the rules applied in this case and uh, if the rule matches it will go to the WSO2 mixer adapter and um, so if the token is a JWT it will uh, in the mixer adapter itself it will uh, validate the uh, signature and uh, and do some scope verification and API subscription verification then uh, once it is uh, succeeded if the, all the verifications are successful then the request will uh, come to the service so, uh, so the policy enforcement or the policy verification will be done at the mixer level so uh, if you go a little bit further in the in this uh, JLW verification process if you take a JWT token which is taken from API store you can see the scope uh, values here and uh, so the token can be only can use uh, the resources which have this uh, scope uh, product ID so uh, if the resource is uh, secured with this particular scope you need to have a token which contains this particular scope as well in addition to that so we do the scope verification in addition to that we verify whether you have already subscribed to an API whether you have already 
uh, subscription for a particular API. So if your token does not contain uh, subscription to that particular API, then we are not going to allow to access the uh, that particular product uh, microservice. So okay, let's uh, look at the O2 validation process um, before I move on to the uh, the demo on O2 validation. So in the O2 also you get the request. Then the NOI will do the policy check uh, with the mixer. When it will come to the mixer adapter, in this case uh, you will get an O2. If it is an O2 token token verification validation will be done with wso2 key manager so the verification will be done with key manager in this case but if you take the jwt case uh, verification done within the mixer itself but if we, it is a o2 it will validate the token by giving the token and other some of the information to the api manager whether the token is valid or not so based on the response coming from api manage key manager then uh, this service can be invoked so i'm going to quickly go through the that as well so in order to access uh, uh, my microservice or using uh, o2 i'm going to create an application called o2 and token type is also O2. Okay, now I have created uh, my application. Now I'm going to uh, subscribe my API with the created application. So I'm going to select the default and uh, I have already subscribed, I have this subscription. Now uh, I'm going to generate a token. In this case, I'm going to give a scope as well. So I'm going to generate a O2 token. So my access token is here. So I have uh, copied my access token. So if I give this to my uh, uh, postman, uh, this access token, I am able to access my uh, microservice. So that's how uh, we can apply uh, uh policy enforcement like uh, how we can uh, do uh, api management in uh, to our microservice now uh, let's see how uh, uh, we can do the we can check on how this behaves in, uh, in the if you take a business use case uh, what more we can get from uh, this with analytics so uh, if you go to store uh, in analytics you can check for api usage uh, it will give uh, application uh, specific uh, analytic information that from this particular o2 application i have uh, three api calls so i can uh, go check on the user based uh, analytics information and i can go with the uh, resource uh, level what are the resources that got uh, involved so the likewise uh, we did not have any fault information and this is about the store analytics and if you go to the uh, publisher in the publisher also you can uh, see the analytics information if you take a uh, product uh, this particular api you have two subscription so we subscribe from two different applications and uh, we have uh, 210 uh, hits and uh, those are like uh, seven from uh, one application and three from other application so the like was you can get those uh, business information uh, for your uh, api or the microservice and uh, if you if I explain a little bit further, you can check on the latency as well. So in this case, um, uh, you can see the, how the graphs behave uh, and uh, how where you have uh, 
spend time on uh, where and uh, in in uh, which state so the back end takes 31 sec uh, 31 milliseconds likewise it shows you uh, those uh, business uh, those analytics information so uh, looking coming back to the presentation again so uh, if you take the analytic uh, process so in the analytic also so the envoy in addition to do the policy check it also sends those um, telemetric information to the mixer time to time once the mixer send those information it will come to the ws pro to mixer adapter then uh, those information will be published uh, via grpc to wso to api analytics server then you will get the summarized uh, analytic information uh, over analytic server and uh, you can get the business information in wso to api manager so that's the basic uh, process how uh, analytic behave so in this um, demo we uh, deployed the microservice and we applied the um, uh, API manager and uh, API management for the microservice. So we secured our microservice uh, with JWT and O2. Then uh, we are able to get the business uh, information as well. So uh, that's about from the demo. Uh, so uh, check on the questions. Section. So the one question uh, we have got is uh, what is the version of uh, API management is this uh, so the, this will be this uh, currently this is available with uh, two API manager 260 and uh, in the future also the next uh, release uh, version will be adding this uh, feature in there also so uh, with some uh, feature enhancement it will be available in the next release as well okay so um Lachmal, anything uh, yeah and the, the question is again uh, the, what is the version so we use the latest version uh with this demonstration Okay, the next question is, uh, uh, okay, what Barina version uh, are we, uh, annotation uh, for STO API manager available for now? Yes, uh, there's a, uh, if, you're, if you're creating microservice using Barina, you can use uh, uh, STO annotation that coming with Barina 90.991. Uh, so it will uh, give the, all the required uh, artifact to deploy on STO uh, while you are compiling the Barina source code. Okay, this next question is uh, when uh, uh, you did API manager deployment, did it deployed the default API gateway? Yeah. For uh, this uh, scenario, we haven't deployed the API gateway. Uh, we used Onoi uh, as the intercept of uh, interception point uh, that coming with the STO layer. So, if you want to have uh, like a global gateway layer uh, uh, before exposing this uh, into the rest of the world, you can have a uh, uh, API, API gateway on top of the STO, uh, uh, STO or service mesh setup. Uh, it depending on your actual requirement. Uh, either you can use without the API gateway, or you can uh, use with API gateway with just your service mesh as well. Okay. Uh, yes, Rahman. So there's a one question uh, that uh, whether we can use the same container version of uh, WSO2 uh, API Manager 260. So uh, if you uh, follow this uh, uh, in the install section, you have this uh, advanced guide where uh, it says uh, what how you can start from scratch and uh, and uh, deploy uh, 
apply configuration to the uh, API manage and analytics and deploy. So uh, you can take uh, download the uh, GA packs and do the configuration. Uh, that's one option. Uh, if you follow the quick start guide, it contains all the necessary uh, uh, configurations are already done and uh, Docker images are already available. Okay, the next question is, can I apply sequences? Uh, for this release, uh, you can't do any uh, uh, message conversion or mediation uh, in the uh, uh, Onoi layer because we are using Onoi uh, at the moment. But uh, uh, for the coming release, uh, we will going to support how you can do the mediation or the how you can do the flow control in the uh, 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 proxy layer. So uh, that is in the roadmap. Okay, so the next question is about uh, Istio is open source and free to use, so you can uh, use Istio. So it uh, you can uh, deploy Istio on top of Kubernetes. Kubernetes also again uh, free and uh, open source. And um, other question yeah. is uh, uh, yes, Lakma. Uh, yeah. So the next question is: uh, Is there an increase in the service latency with the inclusion of? the WSO2 uh, mission. Uh, so basically, uh, yes, uh, there will be a, a, a latency inclusion, but uh, uh, it is for the for the only the first uh, request. Uh, it will be going to be cache. Uh, then uh, after that, it will be taken from the cache. Uh, and uh, so Istio also uh, going to react with mission adapter to uh, push into the noise layer. So with that, uh, this uh, latency will be going away. Uh, okay, yeah, the so question is, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so the the question is about uh, how we can use a noise as an ingress as well. So in, if you take the ingress uh, gateway, noise is being used. So um, you don't need to to that uh, specifically deploy NOI as an ingress. So it is already there in Istio as well. Again, the Istio and version, we are using the latest version. Uh, and there's another question of, uh, it is possible to have an example of stressing these microservices. Yes, uh, you can uh, You can have uh, load the load testing uh, and if, uh, based on the uh, resilient configuration, it can be pre-try, failover, circuit breaker, this config can be applied. Yeah, for okay. the question, next question is API gateway no longer used, request code directed to a NOI. Yes, the, in this uh, uh, scenario, we haven't used gateway. Uh, we directly use ONOI uh, to intercept the uh, uh, request and apply the API management. Uh, like I said, depending on the, like, uh, if you want to do the uh, message transformation or like uh, apply different work uh, uh, flows uh, in this uh, 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 flow, uh, uh, we might need to use the micro gateway instead of uh, ONOI proxy. Okay, I think uh, we are running out of uh, time. Uh, so if you have uh, other questions, uh, please uh, uh, send us, uh, uh, either you can uh, uh, um, directly uh, email us uh, to me at lakmalatws.com or for pubudu, pubudugswh.com. Yeah, yeah, also think, you uh, can uh, uh, discuss any issues or anything with uh, WSO2 Istio APM repo as well. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we can wrap up, wrap up. Thank you very much who has joined. Uh, I hope you got a uh, very good information on how you can use uh, API management on top of Istio. Yeah.